Hello and welcome. Today's session is about uh, marketing research example. We have already discussed uh, about marketing research in two previous sessions and today I am going to give an example to, to uh, explain further because marketing research is kind of uh, slightly complex so uh, with an example it will clarify it much better. What we are going to do is we are going to talk about in-depth concept testing where there is no product involvement then testing with real product various types of market research that we discussed we will show how these are actually done and then how market research can lead us to forecast sell, sales and then prepare project report or make uh, projections about uh, sales and profitability etc. So, if, uh, this is uh, from the previous slides there are three method, separate methods like prime, uh, by source, by methodology, by objective. Important to note that any method which may be say by source you are using primary method, but then primary should be either quantitative or qualitative. It can be exploratory, it can be descriptive, it can be causal. So, they are all overlapping meaning that it is not uh, uh, mutually exclusive. So, let us see how they are kind of interconnected or etcetera. So, uh, 10 carat gold I mean this is an example that we discussed earlier. Uh, it is like this that gold jewelry is most, most sought after in India and uh, people do everything to really possess it is a, a, a thing of high esteem and people also invest in gold for the rainy days etcetera. So, uh, you, you think that you, you observe that there are a lot of people who aspire to possess gold, gold jewelry to adorn them, but then uh, they, they, they can ill afford meaning uh, they do not have enough money to buy and then um, making charge also is very high. Whereas, there are machines which can automatically make and then uh, you get some information from a developed world that 10 carat gold jewelry is a possibility and the glitters as good as 22 carat gold. So, there is no reason why uh, people will not like 10 carat gold jewelry. So, your vision is to empower the poor with articles of high esteem meaning you want to give them this jewelry and make them happy. So, your mission is to make available gold jewelry at affordable price to the middle and lower income people and your objective is to find a product market fit that meets the aspirations of the, of the target audience. As I said gold also is an investment. So, though we are targeting poor, but if that investment uh, side is missing then uh, it does not serve the purpose because poor always have ups and downs and at some point of time they may have to sell that. So, you inquire and you are very sure that 10 carat gold jewelry also will, will ha always have value resale value and just in the same proportion as 22 carat gold. Your hypothesis now. Uh, you think that 10 carat, 10 carat gold jewelry being cheaper, but as glittering as gold and as valuable as an asset class as any other asset will be well appreciated by the middle and lower income families and it will make them really, really happy. That is your hypothesis. So, through market research and through kind of uh, validated learning, you want to test your hypothesis and then move forward start the business. Now, uh, we will we'll first discuss about the primary method of market research that will have both qualitative and quanti quanti quantitative data and then it will be exploratory first one will be explora exploratory. So, these are the primary types of research one is survey another is focus group interview experimental field trial and observation. So, you start with observation that whether uh, this really makes sense this really will make people happy. So, you or whether they, they, they can really afford or they cannot afford or they can afford high value jewelry. So, you just observe maybe you visit some marriages or during festivities you just see people and then or, or watch them. So, that is just an observation and then you get the initial idea that okay, this is going to do what you see people are buying imitation, but they are not happy with that. So, they or maybe they are trying to buy 22 carat gold jewelry they are compromising on the size of it they are buying a very little quantity but they are not so happy, but still they are kind of uh, aspiring and uh, doing their best. So, you can build your hypothesis based, based on this observation. 
it is just building the hypothesis not really testing it. Now, second is by source and secondary research using existing data. So, you have some idea about the market about the possibility that uh, uh, whether this this is going to be kind of a hypothesis or not means whether you really want to move forward spending more time to see the market or what the segment is you want to define them. So, you want to gather some data. So, you do not want to really collect data by yourself at the beginning. So, when you are not gathering data it is secondary research meaning you are you are trying to lay your hands on some existing data that had that have been collected by some agency whether it is panchayat or block development office or some NGO. So, you gather that data to understand the demographic based on uh, income, income distribution meaning uh, poor, middle income, high income and then you want to know how many families have women, how many families are without kind of uh, people who will, um, will be looking forward to purchasing your kind of jewelry. So, you, you gather that data that becomes secondary research and uh, you get all the data. So, you will start analyzing. So, this is secondary research and you are, uh, your objective is to do some exploratory research not really uh, something like uh, experimental or uh, deeper uh, study such as uh, uh, descriptive. So, by method it is quantitative because you are gathering data numerical data, but then it can also be qualitative if suppose you are reading some article in a newspaper or a magazine where the report suggests that uh, some people means the in, in villages uh, majority of the people are middle income or something whatever that is that may be kind of qualitative data may, may not be quantitative. So, it is secondary the exploratory then quantitative or qualitative. So, you have the data. So, let us move forward. Now, we are going to primary means it is not that we are uh, following a sequence. We are following only uh, the sequence of events that you need to do to get better understanding about the market. So, it is not really arranged in terms of the methodology that we have shown. It is in terms of you are gaining confidence in the marketplace and moving forward. So, now you have some kind of exploratory data and you have you think that okay, so the data suggests that there are something like say uh, for the 30 percent or 40 percent or something, the 30 percent perhaps is uh, uh, middle income, then there is another some 40 percent or so um, lower to middle income uh, group of people. So, you think that yeah, this, this, is, this is my segment of the people. So, you want to know whether they will really buy the prefer or not. So, you want to do some primary research meaning that you want to talk to them and gather data directly that is what is primary research gathering data for the problem at hand. Then uh, gathering data can be through question uh, means through survey, through focus group, through many other means, but you want to do a focus group you do not want to do immediately you do not want to go to survey. Why? Because survey requires a lot of money, a lot of time, but you want to get a, a very brief and quick idea uh, whether to move forward, whether to really do a survey or not, because unless it is attractive you do not want to do a survey. So, you invite some people in a room uh, where uh, uh, there will be a kind of a moderator who will be talking to them, will be throwing question that you know gold jewelry, 10 carat gold jewelry is this, this, this. Do you think that you would like to buy? How many of them are willing to buy? Something like that. So, they will give some input based on that you are going to talk to them and understand uh, their, their uh, willingness to buy or not. So, it is kind of uh, interaction as long as you kind of are not satisfied. So, these kind of rooms are normally uh, enclosed rooms where in one wall there is one way uh, mirror meaning that uh, the participants will not know that somebody else is observing them from another room. Suppose, you are sitting on the other room and you are observing how they are uh, reacting, how serious they are whether they are reacting in a mechanical manner or they are really enthusiastic about this new thing. So, out of that you get uh, you are in isolation. So, you are trying to get that data and uh, you get a good understanding about it. So, the results from this interaction with the focus group 
uh, most of them suppose suppose that most of them like the idea and you may even put a figure like uh, based on uh, maybe you can uh, normally in focus group people don't gather numerical data but uh, based on say you ask them to raise your hand how many of you are immediately willing to buy something like that or maybe someone will say okay i am considering when it is i'll consider when it is available some will say i'll see when other people will buy only then i will decide and others there may be other group will say okay i kind of like it but i may not buy something like that so depending on your comfort level you can make group you can ask question okay raise your hand how many of them are like this something like that so primary research that was qualitative so far because uh, because uh, you didn't actually uh, gather numerical value just raising a hand is not really numerical data but that is kind of a uh, early uh, early information for your comfort now you find that uh, a lot of people showed interest to buy immediately and a good percentage also said this they will consider when available and there is some percentage they will wait and watch how other people are buying so you feel that this is kind of encouraging so you decide that okay so let us move forward and do a more deeper research so again you do primary research gathering data is all primary research unless you are gathering existing data so and uh, now you want to do a quantitative research meaning qualitative gives you some kind of idea but one qualitative research this idea is not going to lead you to put a figure somewhere like what should be what would be your sales in the first year in the second year you need some quantitative data so you prepare questionnaire you send them to now you have uh, a fair idea about market segment and uh, based on data you now know where to send this document or your questionnaire whom to send and get the idea so gradually you are moving uh, towards uh, your target audience and uh, try to get deeper and deeper understanding about your target audience so you want to reach to a larger audience for getting a, a better view you design a questionnaire with limited number of questions question we have discussed questionnaire in the previous previous session that the questionnaire should not be a lengthy one and it should give a fair idea about them and the question should be direct and and the answer should be very easy for them to give should not be no confusion in them so while sending the questionnaire it would be a good idea that you send them a nice brochure where the pictures of jewelry is is kind of glittering in the picture and they have a kind of a good feeling about what this is and and whether they really like it or not you send them a good number of means a good number of persons you send this this questionnaire at the same time you can also reach out to some of them directly through your your people or you directly go and meet them and get some idea suppose this is the data 30% is ready to buy immediately looking at the picture itself they say i would like to buy now 40% says okay shall consider when available i have to see the jewelry directly and then i'll decide i cannot decide based on the photograph then 20% say i'll see how other people are behaving and if they say that this is good then only we'll buy 10% say i may not buy so the first three groups are kind of uh, positive purchase intent they have positive purchase intent so you want to uh, explore more on them now you see you can based on this data you understand that this 30 percent is are the early adopters meaning they will buy they are just have already decided without even seeing the product 40 percent uh, early majority they are going to buy meaning once available most likely they will buy then 20 percent is kind of late majority 10 percent are the laggard so you have this classification now done based on market research we have discussed about this how to identify them is market research and if you in your questionnaire if you have some kind of question as to say income bracket or something perhaps you get a fair idea the family income distribution and uh, what would be your total kind of uh, uh, market uh, say how, how, what market you can cater to or who are the likely buyers you will have a fair idea this is putting it in a cumulative manner 30% 30 plus 40 70% 70 plus 20 90 90 plus 10 100% and how they are distributed 
uh, in uh, in the in the graph of you know product adoption uh, in the early product adoption curve uh, early majority sorry uh, early adopters early majority late uh, majority and then laggard so primary research gives you an idea about tam sam and son meaning uh, total available market serviceable available market and serviceable obtainable market how is that suppose you know the segment now you know the segment uh, and you know the we, the willing percentage of the segment so in the country now you if you have the data about the people within this income bracket you now can tell that okay this is the total available market in the country but your target is a particular geographical area in the geographical area if that is some percentage of the entire country so multiply with that percentage you have the serviceable available market now out of them who are immediately willing to buy that is your serviceable obtainable market so portion of the demand that you aim to capture immediately you want to capture you want to capture something say 40% 50% or whatever is your target is the serviceable obtainable market so if you don't remember this is the this is the tam sam and sum how they look like and now put some data on that suppose the entire country there is a market of 1 lakh crore rupees and serviceable available market is a target market that is about 10 crore now suppose you want to capture 30% of the geographical area where your segment is lying uh, means uh, the segment in the geographical area that you would like to capture and you want to target 30% of that market so you are targeting about 3 crore rupees worth of market so now that you have some Uh, not really that means it, it, these are all part of in depth concept study concept meaning that you don't have a product you are just uh, giving a concept to the people and people are giving you feedback but then everything is in the glimpses meaning that there is no product they, they they are not touching the product looking at the product wearing it looking in the mirror how they look like so these are all in the glimpses and uh, these are all uh, part of in depth concept study you have not shown them anything your hypothesis will be validated only when customers buy the product with real money and are happy about the purchase you give them some sample and they buy it and wear it your hypothesis gets tested that yes 10 carat gold jewelry is going to be liked by people etc just selling is not adequate you sell them that is not adequate they have to be happy suppose they buy it and they feel that oh my god i have spent so much money and this doesn't look nice obviously your hypothesis is not tested so are they happy are they kind of advising others to buy or are they showing interest to buy more only then it is kind of validated so other thing is test with real product first is in depth study and second is test with real product this is no classification but this you can think that okay this is one part that is the next part test with real product actually real market research is done like this initially you do some con concept test and then for better understanding more accurate data you do a test test meaning you take the product to the customers and then see their behavior their reaction their willingness to buy that becomes kind of real real test now to do that let us do a causal research or experimental research for validated learning this is real validation you get some sample jewelry made from somebody from abroad or from where whatever source you get something made machine made and then uh, you make some kind of different kinds of uh, Uh, types of jewelry jewelry are of various kinds some are classical some are con contemporary some are antique bead style bridal type temple type spiritual modern and many more types so you make some of them some samples and see what kind of jewelry people are actually interested in and you check whether these can be manufactured in a machine or this really can cannot be of it, it, it needs human to make them you don't want to involve human for making them because you want to reduce the manufacturing cost or making charge so if you make in a machine making, making charge will be very very low and uh, because it is 10 carat so it will be affordable so you want to add this two elements into the product to bring the price down so you have a list of customers who are ready to buy 
you miss through this uh, experiment you give them and then uh, you try selling some through this people check which design is most preferred with out of all those types which is most preferred so you your idea is either get validated you get validated learning whether your product is liked or it is not liked if the results are positive you are ready to go so your hypothesis gets validated if it is not meaning it is otherwise meaning hypothesis is not tested. So, based on this validated learning and this experiment market real experiment experimental data now you are ready to make a forecast based on the data of course. So, suppose that uh, you have already seen that our serviceable obtainable market is 3 crore, but then you may not be able to create the in awareness in the entire geography that you are targeting in the first year itself. So, suppose you you are capable of creating awareness among only 50 percent of the total total segment in the geography, then obviously 3 crore is not your market. It will depend on your promotional budget or advertisement budget etcetera etcetera and even if you advertise the social media you try. So, every advertisement has some effectiveness you advertise and many people do not watch your advertisement may not be so, so, uh, uh, to, so um, uh, catchy and people will not even bother to watch it may be, but alternately on the flip side it may be so attractive that immediately people will like to buy. So, depending on effectiveness and budget uh, you will be able to create a level of awareness among people even uh, means whatever the percentage is. Now, even if you create awareness you may not have a distribution network to reach out to all of them. Some people will like to buy, but then they may not have access to your shop. It may not be online available online because you need that infrastructure you need the payment gateway to, to build up. So, depending on infrastructure and other limitation that may be another factor which will decide whether what percentage of 3 crore you are going to be able to uh, achieve. Then everybody who is saying I shall definitely buy may not actually buy a percentage only will buy when the product is available. Similarly, some people say shall consider when available may be a small percentage of them will buy. So, what percentage this is also very important you have to have some data or assume some value for, for each. So, this is where a rule of thumb actually works in all market research by all agencies worth their salt they, they have some kind of rule of thumb based on their past record historical data. They must have done this research and they have observed that if someone say if, if some x number of people say I will definitely buy what percentage of them actually get converted into buyer. So, research normally say that 80 percent of these people actually buy 20 percent they kind of fizzle out or they, they do not have the money immediately or something that change their mind. So, now suppose 30 percent of the respondent are said that I will immediately buy when available. Now, 80 percent of them will get converted into buyer. So, you have one data point. Also, when some people says that we will consider when available thumb of rule is that or rule of thumb is that 30 percent of them get really converted into customer meaning they buy and people who say that shall wait for other people to buy only 20 percent of them get converted into real buyer. So, you have this three data which is rule of thumb and it actually works meaning that they do not go haywire absolutely haywire they really really help. So, what is the exact market you are likely to capture in the first year second year now you have to make another assumption that is uh, what is the aware level of awareness that you are going to create. So, you think that okay, given the kind of advertisement that we are going to do or we, are may, we may not do any advertisement we may do some, uh, some kind of awareness campaign through market or through some other means through social media and you think that 50 percent of your market are going to be aware about your, your value proposition your product etcetera. So, if that is 50 percent then you are to then out of the total market of rupees 3 crore you are targeting 
actually only 50 percent of them because other 50 percent will not even know that your pro product exists. Now, out of the 30 percent of the people who says that we will definitely buy only 80 percent will buy and then they will buy who are these people. So, they are 30 percent of 1.5 crore worth of market are ready to buy but 80 percent of them will get converted into buyer. So, you are actually going to get something achieve something like 0.36 crore rupees worth of market out of this 30 percent population that is early adopter. Out of the early majority that is the 40 percent of the population of 1.5 crore rupees market you are going to gain something like 30 percent of them because 30 percent is the rule of thumb. So, that makes 0.18 crore and another 20 percent of the 20 percent who said ok I will see when other people buy we may think of buying that is only 0 0.06 crore. So, it is a multiplication effect and the number really goes down total is only 0 0.61 crore rupees. So, your first year sales forecast is 0 0.60 crore rupees. So, still there are other factors that we have not considered factors like quality you may have a very poor quality, ok type quality, average quality, you may have wonderful quality. So, if it is like average quality, your 80 percent will get down to something else. So, quality will have another factor, Maybe 90 percent of the people will buy average quality, Maybe 100 percent of the people will buy wonderful quality. So, depending on that several other factors actually may be may have to be factored, Maybe it will be 90 percent of 80 percent of 30 percent something like that. Then again geographical area, what percentage, purchase channel meaning how many people are accessible to the channel that you are kind of offering. Second year forecast, now you say that okay, awareness will go up to say 80 percent of the population, 80 percent of the target audience. So, your target is 3 crore rupees, 80 percent of that makes 2.4 crore, I am slightly the data is slightly kind of uh, apple and uh, orange because uh, the 2.4 crore or 3 crore these are in rupee term 80 percent in population terms, but then population and rupee are kind of almost like synonym because population per head if you have a per head purchase data multiplied by that will give you rupee in rupee terms. So, take it as whatever it is it is kind of gives a fair idea about that kind of uh, uh, projected sales that you are going to make. So, with the same formula your next year targeted sales would be something like 0.97 crore round it off to 1 crore. So, next year uh, your targeted sales is 1 crore that is how normally sales forecast is made and if you have really good data to depend on then you can make a forecast which will be kind of trusted by your investor wherever you pitch they are going to look at this data this is very very exhaustive rigorous. So, they, they are going to value they are not, not going to question your sales forecast. You can always make a pessimistic estimation or a kind of realistic estimation and an optimistic estimation depending on what kind of awareness you are going to create, what kind of market you are going to target put some data pessimistic, realistic, optimistic and then you can always say that we go by realistic that that is going to be acceptable. So, this is the gist of the uh, experiment uh, gist of the market research that we have discussed. One is initially you get gather data for consumer reaction uh, to new product concepts. So, it is a concept test conceptual appeal and the product satisfaction level. Then you go for marketing plan as to how you are going to advertise, what is the level of awareness you will be able to create. So, depending on that you get another factor media schedule and then distribution uh, build plan, how you are going to promote promotion, how much you are going to invest. Third is the adjustment factor like say um, what percent of the consumers who are saying I will definitely buy are going are actually going to buy. So, another factor you have to multiply with that factor we have seen 80 percent of them, 30 percent of them, 20 percent of them buy actually. Then volume projection meaning you estimate the first year based on how much you are going to create awareness based on maybe repeat sale also like through experiment you can actually get idea about what percent of the people will be repeat buyer. So, you can multiply with that if there are repeat buyer you can say 10 percent of them are going to repeat buyer. So, it is going to be 1.1 rather than 
just one. So, repeat buyer are kind of increasing the number. What is the takeaway? What are the takeaways? It is possible to realistically predict projected sales, profit and other financial. How to project profit? Now, you, you will know what is the gross profit margin that your retailer is expecting. So, reduce that part. Now, you have the actual realization of the money that you are going to get and then you have some estimation of the cost of production, marketing cost etcetera, etcetera. So, you can actually make a make very informed and um, logical estimate of the profit, the realistic price and based on the likely turnover, you can estimate uh, price elasticity, sensitivity of demand etcetera, etcetera. All these can be estimated out of this data. Price elasticity is if you increase the price, what, what percentage of the customer are going to go away, you reduce the price, what is the increase in demand. So, demand is always price elastic. Marketing research is helpful if not indispensable for launching new product. Obviously, now you can appreciate with this example. Some market intelligence is absolutely necessary to cap capture some surprises from competitors that cannot give from market research. Some intelligence is necessary what your competitors are doing, people always do that. But then remember, the actual performance will depend on several factors. You make assumptions, if you make optimistic assumption, it may not go, it may not fructify. You make realistic assumption, perhaps your data will be kind of okay. Uh, this lecture have been prepared, has been prepared with direct reference to a paper from Harvard Business uh, public publication, True Earth healthy foods market research for a new product introduction by V. Kasturi Ranga and Sunru Yeung. So, we should attribute this to them and uh, of course, their paper is very complex they, this is that is targeted to real marketing research guys, but uh, it, it is actually means uh, ours is a very simplistic example and here is some concluding uh, remarks that you can read uh, in absence of time I will not really read them. Thank you very much. We close it here.